Welcome to another Glowmetrics video where we look at the latest updates, news and guides in the world of digital analytics and marketing. Today we're going to look at Looker Studio Pro which is the upgraded enhanced version of Google's Looker Studio product. This is a product used for data visualization and report building, building dashboards. So Looker Studio Pro was first announced back in October 2022, just after the rebranding and the relaunch of Looker Studio. So if you haven't heard of Looker Studio before, you may have heard of Google Data Studio, and it was essentially exactly the same product. But Looker had been acquired by Google back in 2020 um, for just over two and a half billion dollars. Looker itself is more of a competitor to something like Tableau and really big data tools and data warehouses for larger organizations. With Looker Studio, it's more of a hands-on, intuitive approach to building dashboards and reports. So Looker Studio was the relaunch of Google Data Studio, and with that came all the exact same features you would expect to find in Data Studio. So most of those features remain free to this day, but they also announced Looker Studio Pro, and that was a paid version of the service with um, enhanced features, upgrades, and new capabilities. But maintaining that all the existing capabilities within Looker Studio would remain free for everyone. So today I want to look at, first of all, how does Looker Studio itself work? Maybe you're not familiar with that product. How can you connect data and start building some um, start building some dashboards? Then we're going to look at the benefits of Looker Studio Pro, why it might be time to upgrade. Again, now that the, the upgrade's been there for about two and a half years, what are the benefits to, to you? What are the benefits to small, medium, large organizations that you might get out of that paid service? And also, how much does it cost? So in terms of the basics of Looker Studio itself, whether you're on the normal model or you're on the pro model, you need data. You need a data source to connect to Looker Studio. So to connect to Looker Studio, what we use are called data connectors. And there's two main types of those. There's Google connectors, the native connectors that are supported by Google and Looker Studio. And there's partner connectors, third party connectors, paid connectors from other services, things like Supermetrics and SEMrush and um, lots of other tools as well. So we'd use those to connect things like Meta and LinkedIn and other databases, Salesforce even. At the minute, there are over thousands of connectors, but actually only 24 of those, give or take, are Google native connectors. Those ones are the supported by the Looker Studio team. So once we've got our connector, we can hook in a data source and that uses the API to pull the data into Looker Studio, into our dashboard so that we can use it in our reports. Once we've got our data connected to Looker Studio, that data is going to be broken down into different data fields. So those data fields are most likely going to be dimensions and metrics, particularly if you're using something like Google Analytics or Google Ads and some of those native connectors. If you're not familiar with the terms dimensions or metrics, don't worry at all. Really, a dimension is just a category, a grouping variable, and a metric is a measurement. So dimensions in something like Google Analytics are going to be things like source medium, your page path, your different acquisition channels, different event names, device types like desktop, mobile and tablets. Your metrics are then going to be those measurements, those numbers behind those. So how many users were there? How many page views, sessions, event count, transactions, revenue, those different e-commerce ones as well. They're all measurements, so they're all metrics. Once we've got our data fields, those are going to be in different data types. And I said those are things like uh, numbers, percent, durations, text entries, Boolean statements, so true and false geographical data, URLs, e-commerce data, all that. But all that's going to be done with an official connector, something like Google Analytics, that'll all be done automatically. If you're using more customized databases, uh, maybe something like Google Sheets or Excel or your own connector that you've created, you might need to look at this and make some changes just to make sure that data set is exactly as you would expect it to be before you start building your reports. Once we've got our data fields from our data source, we can then start to build out widgets. So a widget or component in Looker Studio is really just a visualization, whether that's a, a pie chart, a table, a graph, a visualization of some of those different fields, some of those different variables. Maybe you've got some filters applied on that as well, but that's really all it is in terms of the fundamentals of how you would create a widget. If I want to create a, a, a visualization showing me the number of page views broken down by different devices, I might look at a pie chart but really I've got a pie chart that shows me device category and sessions or page views. And all of these different charts, although some will look more complicated than others, some might look more advanced and you might not even need visualizations that are that advanced, but they all follow the exact same principles. Once you're able to create widgets, again, those different widget types, things like scorecards and line graphs and heat map tables and pie charts. Once you're able to create those widgets, you're then able to create reports. 
And once you can create reports, you can create dashboards. And that's all a dashboard is, is just a collection of reports. And within Looker Studio, then there's so many different customization options in terms of the visuals, in terms of the style, the design. Really, that's all entirely up to you. You'll always start with a blank canvas, and that means you can tailor your report to exactly your needs. So with all those features already available in Looker Studio, you might be wondering what some of the benefits of upgrading to the Pro model actually are. And I think there's three main areas I'd like to focus on in terms of what those benefits are and what it means for you. One of those is just the cost. How much is it actually going to cost you to upgrade to the Pro subscription for Looker Studio? Now that will vary depending on the size of your organization and the number of reports you have, the number of data sources you're pulling from. And many of the upgrades that we'll talk about today are also probably dependent on the size of the organization. And lastly, AI integration. So Looker Studio Pro now has a lot of integration with Gemini, which is Google's AI tool, to help you build reports, to help you learn more about your data as well. And that's one of the big pushes for Looker Studio Pro. So look, first of all, as we said, what about the cost? So Looker Studio itself, as we've said, completely free. It is a free platform to use to start building reports in once you've connected in your data. Looker Studio Pro is a paid subscription. And that starts at around $9 a month. Now, what that means is that per user, per project, you will pay $9 each month. So the more users you have in your organization, the more projects, the more dashboards, the more data sources, the larger that subscription fee is going to be. If you already have a Looker license, this may already be included as well. So it's worth looking into that. So even if you're only building a few reports, you could be looking at $9, $18, $27, and so on. You can see how that would scale up. And what do you actually get for your money? Well, I said a lot of these are going to be focused on collaboration, teamwork spaces, organization settings. So on the free model, dashboards belong to individual users. Those are signed to individual users. What we can do with Looker Studio Pro is then assign that to an organization. What that means is that even if the original creator leaves or collaborators are moving into different projects, different areas of the business, you can still maintain ownership and permission settings over those dashboards. So it's a lot easier to manage those over a large organization, a much larger pool of reports. And it's that team workspace and collaboration that is really the focus of Looker Studio Pro so far in its first two, two and a half years. So with normal Looker Studio dashboards, we have two main permission levels, and that's editor and view. Now with the pro model, we then have some additional permissions on that as well. And those are manager, content manager, and contributor as well. You'll also get advanced report delivery. And this has been one of the really interesting changes and shift in the pro model within the last, even just the last few weeks. So with scheduled reports and report delivery, which is available in the free model of Looker Studio, you can send out reports uh, via email on a, um, on a schedule on a regular basis, whether that's once a week, um, first thing on a Monday morning, first of the month, a few times throughout the week, whatever that might be. And you're allowed to send or set one schedule per report. With Looker Studio Pro, you can set up to 20 different automated schedules within each dashboard. So that means you can send different pages of report to different teams. You can send them at different times to different groups and so on. So you're allowed up to 20 different um, schedules within one dashboard. But now there's also enhanced features for scheduled report delivery. And this is one of the few things that they've taken away um, from, the, from the free model of Looker Studio. And what would happen when you send this um, automated delivery of a report is you would see a preview of that in the email itself. Uh, it would show you the first three to five pages of that dashboard. It will also attach a PDF um, and a link to the report itself. Now in the free model, you'll still get the PDF and you'll still get a link to the report, but you'll no longer see that preview. And as I said, that's one of the first things I've actually taken away from the free model. So hopefully that's not a sign of things to come and that we're gonna lose anything from the free model, but it is something to be aware of. That's another selling point then of the pro subscription. Personalized reporting links as well, which means you can, not only can you send automated deliveries to different teams, but you can actually customize how those reports look as well in terms of the different filters that are being applied. Again, different filters, different settings um, are gonna apply to different teams. And that's something we can do with, with, with the pro model as well. But we can also share links to allow users to interrogate the data themselves, to actually interact with the reports a lot more, make their own changes. And that's through these um, personal report links. So that empowers exploration in the reports, as I said, to interrogate the data and get stuck in themselves. 
because they're exploring their own version of the report that's not going to make any changes in terms of the original version in terms of your host version of that report now some of these benefits already certainly with the organization um, team workspaces and the, the the different permissions those are definitely things that you don't have access to but in terms of these report deliveries and the personalized reporting links um there are probably some workarounds around that that you can use with the free model already in terms of the report delivery and those scheduled deliveries you could duplicate the dashboard and create slightly different dashboards for different teams and then you'd still have different schedules with different dashboards you've got different schedules and similarly with the personal report links again you could make duplications of that dashboard and then there's no there's no risk of anyone making any changes while they're doing their own explorations to that main um, host report uh, to your foundational report to your um to your own one that you're then you're basing all the others off so there's a few ways around that and that might be part of the reason that they're starting to starting to take some of those features available on the free model um, and making those exclusive to the to the pro model you've also got access to a mobile app a dedicated mobile application for looker studio and that's part of the the looker app itself that means you can access reports and data while on the go um, and it gives you a more dynamic mobile friendly view of dashboards We've seen this already in the free version of Looker Studio. There's been a few differences to give you this dynamic view. What that means is that it will dynamically move widgets in the page depending on your screen size. So there have already been some features added to them in the free version that they've taken from this, um, from this mobile app. But there's also nothing stopping you from designing a dashboard that is meant to be viewed on mobile. So you could do that and again, maybe that's another slight workaround. You'd be viewing it through the browser um, without this application, but it's still certainly a potential workaround for that in the meantime if you're not willing to uh, to make the jump into the pro model but one of the biggest things is cloud customer care really this gives you access to looker studio support you get a dedicated technical support team for looker studio pro they're going to help you with your dashboard to help you with queries and help you with any issues that you run into and that's not something you get access to on the free version of looker studio so i think that's probably one of the biggest um the biggest selling points of the pro model Along with that is then Gemini integration. So we're seeing a massive shift in the industry as we are in the world in general, um, with AI take coming on leaps and bounds within the last two, three, four, five years. And more and more, it's becoming a tool that we need to integrate into the way we work. And that Looker Studio is no exception to that. And there are a lot of benefits to being able to use AI uh, when it comes to Looker Studio. So with Gemini in particular, I think this is really helpful in terms of creating reporting plans, ideas for visualizations, but really helping with calculated fields, custom functions, some of those more advanced features in Looker Studio, where you can create custom metrics and dimensions and new formulas and blend data. But you can now do that using natural language prompts as you can with a lot of other AI tools and other, um, and other facets. You can then also take a Looker Studio report and create a presentation just off the back of that with the click of a button. Now, there's no sense that presentation is going to be perfect in terms of your Google Slide. That's a really good starting point. So with any AI tool or platform, again, it's, it's, it's a tool. It's there to help facilitate your job and to help you do a better job, really, to help you build better reports and be more efficient at that. It's not a solution um, to necessarily replace your entire report building process. Um, and you'll see that when you use this again, if you're particularly with the likes of custom functions, it's really important to check what the output is. Um, it might not be correct and certainly using Gemini and Looker so far, there's, it, it can definitely be touch and go. But it's a really useful tool to help you get started. Um, and again, as a tool, as an assistant. At the minute, Gemini and Looker is actually still free. But that's only for a limited time only, as far as the Google team are telling us. So this is something that will become exclusive to Looker Studio Pro. But at the minute, it is available, so it's definitely worth checking out. As I said, Gemini or other tools like ChatGPT or whatever it might be are really useful when creating dashboards. It's a really helpful assistant and a tool, but always proceed with caution. Always make sure to check what the output is and to test those things. And much like we saw with the automated report delivery and those personalized links, there might be a bit of a workaround here as well. So you do need a Looker Studio Pro subscription to use Gemini as a built-in assistant and to use it within Looker Studio itself. But there's nothing stopping you from using Gemini in general and asking it Looker Studio questions and asking it for advice in Looker Studio. So again, the built-in assistant is definitely a more streamlined way of doing it. 
And again, that might then start to um, start to be a more exclusive feature. But at the minute, there are other ways of using those tools and integrating them into your dashboard process. As I said, in particular with custom fields and case functions, I think Gemini is brilliant to ex explaining how those work as well. So you're also educating yourself and you're teaching yourself while you're going. Gemini is not just doing the work for you. And I think that's a really important distinction. As I said, don't forget to test and double check. Not everything it comes out with will be perfect. And Gemini will also make sure to tell you that as well, which is really useful. But like a brilliant tool to help you get inspiration, help you build reports and start to get into those more advanced features. So to recap some of those key areas we've focused on. So again, first, just to look at the cost. Starting at around $9 per month, it's a self-service subscription. You can add as many users to that subscription as you need. And you'll only be billed for the different users you have on that subscription. Again, different reports, different data sources might add to that as well. So something to keep an eye on, but quite inexpensive compared to some of the other upgrades from the Google marketing platform. As we said, most of the benefits are then focused around medium to large scale organizations, how you work together, how you collaborate, how you can scale up your reporting systems. So you can own your organization's content, collaborate at scale with team workspaces, those automated report deliveries, again, different deliveries for different teams, different schedules for different groups, for different cohorts of, of colleagues and clients, empowering exploration with the personalized report links, a dedicated mobile application, and really one of those most important things, that cloud customer care as well. And then lastly, as we looked at Gemini and Looker as well, and that built-in assistant tool to help you ask questions about your data, create new custom functions and created fields using natural language prompts, just to really, again, make that all the more streamlined and all the more intuitive and ultimately easier to use. The easier your reports are to use, the more time you can spend looking at the data, analyzing the data, identifying trends, seeing things of interest and getting into the real, the real analysis of your data. And that's where we can then really improve our data-driven decision-making processes. So hopefully that's given you a bit of an overview of some of the benefits of upgrading to Looker Studio Pro. You can try Looker Studio Pro at no additional cost for 30 days. So even that should give you just an insight into some of those different features and those tools. There's always new features being added as well. So it's really important to keep an eye on the release notes for Looker Studio Pro and Looker Studio itself as well, just to see what new things are coming, what's in the pipeline, what's maybe being released in alpha and beta. Because there's always new things now coming every single month. And that's been one of the, the real benefits, I think, and one of the real improvements since the, the transition from Data Studio to Looker Studio. If you've enjoyed this video and want to see more on Looker Studio, Looker Studio Pro, but also other tools within the Google marketing platform like Google Analytics, Google Ads, Google Tag Manager, and other industry trends, industry news across the wider digital analytics and marketing space, check out the Glowmetrics Resource Hub. You'll get early access to all our videos before they're available anywhere else. If there are any topics you'd like us to cover or have questions about, do get in touch via the website. Leave a comment below whether you're watching this on the Resource Hub or on YouTube. And until next time, all the very best from the Glowmetrics team.